transforming sex energy i do not teach you how to become master of your sex own energy what i teach you is how to remain one how not to be divided within how not to be divided between the body mind and soul the matter the lower the higher the sacred the profane this worldly and the other worldly never divide and when you divide this is high this is low this is good this is bad then you will remain in your to the particular thing and this is what has happened with the sex energy it is not that you acquired on your on your own it is part of your being it is in every cell of your being whether you deny it or not it does not mean it is not there so it is better to accept it and acceptance is the first criteria of transcendence acceptance of its presence is the first criteria for transforming this sex energy never divide divided you cannot attain to harmony and integrity the wall that you see in front of you is one piece is it divided no there is nothing higher and lower if you really in are intelligent you will know without the lower the higher cannot exist without the first block without the foundation the wall will not begin its journey first the foundation is made the stronger the foundation the stronger the wall will be and the foundation is not visible to you then one by one the blocks keep on coming up to create a wall one block makes the way for the next 
so each block of the ball is as relevant as anything else without the foundation the first block that is visible to you cannot come into existence it is meaningless and then one by one the blocks are put on until this process continues this process of putting on the blocks one by one continues until the ball reaches its ultimate according to your building structure when it reaches a certain height the construction man says this is the height of the wall that we need and when he checks he may tell you that one more block is needed one more row of the block is needed when i say the blocks are put one by one then a row is completed then a second row and a third row and so on and so forth until the required height is attained then the second stage begins second stage is then you create the beam because the roof has to stand on the beam and the beam cannot exist without the wall so every in the scheme of the house the foundation the rows of the block that finally become the wall then the beam then the inner structure of the roofing then the outer structure all these are relevant so what you can say if you are intelligent enough the lower part of the wall that is the foundation the first row of the blocks this is the foundation for the next row the foundation is the beginning of the first row of the blocks and when the first row of the block is put it becomes the beginning of the second row of the block unless the first row of the blocks is complete the second row cannot begin and until the second row is finished the third row cannot begin so lower is the beginning of the higher lower is the beginning of the higher and higher is the culmination the fruition of the lower then lower attains to a particular height a particular maturity it becomes the culmination the flowering happens the beam cannot be put on until all the rows of the block is finished and the wall is complete then the beam is put on then the structure of the roof begins so one gives way to the other in the same way the process of transformation of the sex energy begins if you discard the lower considering it to be profane you cannot attain to the higher and higher and lower are part of one synergistic harmony but we have created division always and once you are divided you cannot attain to totality this is the first criteria except the totality not as higher and lower sacred and profane then you will create the division and the division is disease and with the disease you cannot attain to the hell and once you divide you are in conflict friction then the joy disappears then the blessing disappears then you cannot attain to blissfulness then life becomes a agony a misery and there is no victory possible how can you be victorious over yourself it is impossible you cannot win discard the lower and attain to the higher you cannot discard the body and attain to the nuances of the mind you cannot discard the mind to attain the nuances 
the blissfulness of the soul. That is what why your monks, mahatmas, sadhus, and all these your so-called religious people look so sad, as if the sap of life has been. They are deprived of the sap of life. There is no life. There is no energy. Their life is a life of futility. And what is fundamental? Where they have missed, they have divided themselves. They have divided themselves between the sacred and profane. They have divided between lower and higher. They have divided between body and the mind. I teach you undivided existence. This is the beginning of. Journeying into the higher realms of consciousness, remain undivided. Never think yourself separate from your sexual energy. Anything and anything for that matter. You are it. You are your sexual energy. You are your love energy. Remember this. You are your love energy. You are your consciousness. You are your body. You have many aspects. Your diamond has many aspects of it, and all those aspects together make you precious. But this idea has persisted down the ages, and particularly about the sex energy. It is so simply because sex has the greatest appeal. Hence, the egoistic always finds it attractive to fight with it. If one can win over one's sex, then one is winner. And sex seems to be the greatest challenge to the egoist. Remember, it is not a challenge to the spiritualist. For the spiritualist, there is no challenge. For him, life is a let go, a relaxation, and a total acceptance. For the egoist, the life is always a challenge, a problem to be solved. Either the challenge has to come from the outside, or it has to come from inside. Either he has to climb the highest mountain top, because the highest mountain top, the Everest, is there like a challenge. So sex stands like the highest mountain peak, and when somebody stands unconquered, it hurts. No purpose is being served by reaching the mount. The Highest mountain peak of Everest. Only one purpose: that man has conquered it, and in doing that, ego feels happy. So, in conquering sex, which stands in front of you, and you have been told that it is the greatest challenge that one has to conquer, and when you has conquered this. Everything will be good, but remember, you. What would you gain by conquering it? Or the egoist turn inwards. There are egoists whose journey is outward, and egoists whose journey is inwards. For inward egoist, the ego finds the greatest challenge in sexual energy. Because the attraction is great, it is always there. It is immense and unconquerable, so they begin to fight with it. But fighting with it, you will simply destroy yourself. And all the beauty of the sexual energy too is lost. Then you are lost in the woods, never to find your way. Sexual energy has not to be conquered. Instead, 
it has to be used in a creative way there is no fight but there is a great rush and much is possible through it in fact all is possible through it on different levels it is the same energy that becomes love and prayer you call the first row of the block that is underground by a different name a man who is born without sexual energy will not be able to love will not be able to feel compassion either it is the ice that melts and becomes fluid like water and it is the water when it is put on to the fire it evaporates and becomes a steam the steam is another form of water and water is another form of ice clouds is another form of water where the water vapors are condensed so these are the various names and various forms of the same energy on different levels it is the same energy that becomes love and prayer a man who is born without any sexual energy will not be able to love will not be able to feel compassion either will not be able to pray because prayer is the highest form of sexual energy it is the transformation not sublimation transformation of sexual energy compassion is the transformation of sexual energy if you fight with sex you will never be able to transform it into prayer fight never transforms anything through fight you only destroy and when you destroy your sexual energy what are you destroying have you ever thought of it you are destroying yourself you are destroying your possibility of growth you are destroy, destroying the possibility of transformation and transcendence transformation needs friendship be friended it is your energy it is you do not think in terms of master and slave use it as your potential raw energy it is it can be refined when you look at the process of the sugar how the sugar comes first the cane is the juice is extracted from cane then it is allowed to go through the complete process of process then first molasses comes molasses when it is cleaned and it sort solidifies it attains to another form and then when it is refined it attains to another form these are the by products look at the natural gas the gasoline as it is extracted from the well it goes through the process of transformation and at each stage something new is formed you seem to be very intelligent in knowing this the petrochemical engineering teaches you all that how to refine and each product by name it by a different name and each of these has a specific purpose use it as your potential but when it comes to the existential bioenergy you seems to be naive you seem to be ignorant because you have been taught like this you have been conditioned like this it is raw energy it can be refined it can be sublimated then it can reach to the higher peaks that you have not even dreamt of it can become finally your experience of samadhi but never start with animity be friend 
pursuing, observe, try to understand it. what it is, its attraction, its joys, its exhilarations, the small momentary ecstasies that become that becomes possible through it. Be aware of all these small joys. What exactly happens when you make love? For a moment time disappears and that timeless moment gives you immense joy. The timeless moment when you disappear not knowing what had happened to you gives you immense joy. That is the first glimpse of the ultimate. Sex is not your enemy. Instead, it is the window to God. Of course, it opens and closes. All that you see is lost, but that is no reason to be angry with it. It is through it that you become aware that something beyond the mundane is there and the beyond is possible. Even if it was a momentary glimpse, when you were lost completely and ego was no more functioning, the two bodies, the two energies, two minds melt into one another to become a higher mind, to become a higher body, to become a higher energy. You were expanded. Those moments of sexual orgies were the first glimpse and it is those glimpses that gave the seers, the masters, the first glimpse of the ultimate. It is in the dawn that you glimpse the glory of the day. It is the first ray of the sun that gives you the glimpse of the entire glory of the sun. If you discard the first ray, how can you experience the glory of the sunlight? How can you experience the glory of the moonlight if the first glimpse is discarded? Those moments of sexual orgasm are like the first glimpse of the sun ray, first experience of the moonlight. And this experience in the spiritual terms is called suffering. Those moments of disappearance while making love are the moments of sexual orgasm and give you the first glimpses. They are crude primitive, rudimentary of God experience. They are crude, primitive and rudimentary experiences of God. I cannot tell you how to master the sexual energy. There is no way to master it. And those who have tried to master it, those who have tried to conquer it, have failed. In mastering it, you can destroy it and in destroying you will be destroying yourself and nobody else. You will be destroying your possibility of growth. You will be destroying the possibility of transcendence. Once your sexual energy is destroyed, you will become juiceless, your life will be dry and your life will be a desert. Then no more roses, no more lotuses, then you are no more an oasis. You will live a kind of death. You will carry your grave around yourself. Masters have emphasized on transforming this energy. Sufis have not initiated the general, generally the people until they were married. And when they were married, the couple were initiated together. Go into it totally 
yet meditating. Listen to its message. Be very silent. Sex is sacred. When you enter into it, you are entering the greatest temple that is there. You are on the holy ground. Put all your mind and worries away. Go dancing with joy, with prayer, with gratitude, without any distractions. When a particular moment in the journey of sex comes, do not get distracted. Go dancing with joy, with prayer, with gratitude and you will come out of it renewed, rejuvenated, reoriented, with fresh vision, insights, intuitions and you will attain to transformation of this energy. This is the very purpose of the, the temples of Ajanta and Alora, the Khujraho temples, where there are hundreds of erotics, different sexual postures are shown. And these were created by the masters, the sages. What was the purpose behind it? If that purpose is really understood, not as a piece of a sculpture, the piece of a sculpture as, is used as a device to transform beyond this sex energy. Not to sublimate it, not to reject it, not to discard it. It is while traversing through the temple walls, through the erotics in different sexual postures, when you go through this, Remember, you are not to be distracted by it. Your purpose is to walk through the admiring each and every sculpture, not remaining entangled in them. Admiring is different thing. You admire, you proceed to the next stage. If there is a purpose, when you are refining your the crude oil, every stage when something comes out, you enjoy it and put it for a separate use. And then your research, your process of refining continues. You have to refine the sex energy until it reaches to the premium quality. The premium quality of gasoline is of the highest value. It fetches highest price. But in order to do that, you have to refine it. And when it is finally refined, it becomes precious. When the diamond is first extracted from the mine, it is in crude form. It cannot fetch the price. It is polished, it is cut into shape, it undergoes a complete process of transformation and then it becomes most precious jewel to adorn the crowns, to adorn the jewelry or anything. It becomes an expensive ornament. Your sex energy can become a precious ornament, a diamond, once you know the art of refining. So when you are traversing through the temples of Khajraho, it is like a remembrance, a replica that man faces when he walks, he traverses through the life's journey, life's roads. Everywhere there is attraction of this and that and the combined total name of this is known as Kam Vasana, the desire. This is natural. But when 
it reaches to the mind level it becomes lust there is a difference between the sex energy and lust sex energy is natural and spontaneous and lust is man made it is a creation of the mind be aware of this when you see the erotics you can see it and energy and art a work of creation a piece of art a sculpture it will inspire your creative instincts it will activate your creative instincts but when it becomes lust it is it will destroy you you enjoy the creativity of these artists and when you reach continue in your journey in the inner temple of the khujraho there is no sculpture there is just emptiness you have walked through you enjoying the moments of creativity that you experienced without any stain on your consciousness any trace of lust you reach your consciousness attains its crystal clarity that is the moment of emptiness when you attain to this entire energy the existential bio energy is transformed you are rejuvenated you are renewed reoriented you are reoriented with fresh visions insights and intuitions you have transformed and this process of transformation comes through understanding first and then transforming that very understanding transforms the existential by Only this much for this morning on this topic.